Math 2414, integration by parts, checking the previous answer. At the end of the last video, I came up with an answer to the integral assigned to the fifth power of x using a, a, a reduction formula that we created two videos ago. And we got this pretty ugly looking answer, negative one-fifth sine to the fourth power of x cosine of x minus four-fifteenths sine squared x cosine of x minus eight-fifteenths cosine x. And then I kind of nonchalantly said, if you take the derivative of that carefully, it should clean up to sine to the fifth power of x. But I know a good opportunity to learn when I see one, and I think it would be beneficial for me to actually work out taking the derivative and simplifying it down to the point where it's sine to the fifth power of x. One of two things will happen. I'll get there, and you'll kind of see inside of my brain, not literally, uh, the things to think when you're trying to reach a predetermined goal. That goal is the derivative of this should collapse down to sine of the fifth. Or I'll make a mistake and have to go back and refilm the last video, in which case I might not even have uploaded it or this one. So if, if it was wrong, you'll never know. <laughs> now, actually, I would leave it up and do a follow-up video because as I've said before, no, I don't care how good you think you are, we make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes in math. The question is, do you catch them? And when you do, do you learn from them? So I, I invite you to pause the video and try to take the derivative of this to see if you can take it down to sine to the fifth power of x. But I'm about to start doing it myself. But I'm gonna use some of my, uh, not really dirty bag of tricks or anything, but just some things that I would do that you might not do. Uh, at the end of the previous video, I did casually mention that we could factor out I'm sorry, it's a plus C here. Oh no. I did casually mention that we could factor out a negative, a cosine, or maybe even some fractions uh, so that it would look a little bit better. I'm gonna do that because it'll actually make taking the derivative easier. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's start by taking this guy, so give me a second to write it, negative one-fifth sine to the fourth power of x, cosine of x, uh, minus four-fifteenths, sine squared of x, cosine of x, and then minus 8 fifteenths cosine of x. And we're going to factor out all the things that we can in an effort to make it look a little bit better. All three are negative, so we can factor out a negative. Everybody has a cosine, but I'm also going to factor out the fraction. And the easiest way to factor out a fraction is to get them all to have a common denominator and then just factor out one over the denominator. In this case, a common denominator would be 15. I can make this fraction of 15 easily by multiplying both sides by three. That would put a 15 on the bottom and a three on the top. So what I'm gonna factor out is a negative, a 1 15th, and a cosine of x. Let's see what that equals. Everything becomes positive. Everybody loses their denominator. Everybody loses their cosine. So we're left with three sine to the fourth power of x, we took out the cosine, plus we took out the negative, four, we took out the 15, sine squared of x, took out the cosine, plus eight, oh, just plus eight. Okay, so our answer is equal to that, and so the derivative with respect to x of our answer, getting a little loosey-goosey with the notation there, but this is just for demonstration purposes, kicks and giggles, if you will, kicks. Um, if we take the derivative of this product, guess what rule we need? The product rule. The reason factoring out a common factor is beneficial is because now instead of having to do the product rule twice, I only have to do it once, because there's only one product. All right, so how does the product rule go? Derivative of the first, so let's think about that. Here's the first, here's the second. For the derivative of negative 1 15 is cosine of x, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that will change to positive 1 15. And of course, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it becomes sine. So we get that times the first. Uh, so I'm sorry, the derivative of the first times the second, so the second part stays the same. 3 sine to the fourth power of x plus 4 sine squared x plus eight, and then plus, hope we have enough room here, the first times the derivative of the second. Well, since the first is negative, let's change this to a minus, minus one fifteenth cosine of x times the derivative of the second part. 
uh, which will invoke the chain rule and the power rule. So the derivative here, remember, something like sine to the fourth x, the, the power is actually outside, the trig function is inside. The derivative here would be 12, let's start writing it, 12 sine to the third power x, and then times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of sine is cosine, and I'm going to run out of room. Okay, uh, I know it's going to make the video longer, but it's an optional video anyway. So I'm going to start rewriting this answer over a little bit. 1 15th sine of x times the second, so times 3 sine to the fourth power of x plus 4 sine to the second power of x plus 8. And then the second half of the product rule is the first, which is negative 1 15th cosine of x times the derivative of the second, and that would be 12 sine to the third power of x times cosine, which comes in from the derivative of the inside, a la the chain rule, plus derivative on the power, bring down the 2, get 8 times sine x, or sine of the first power of x, and then the chain rule says times the derivative of the inside, derivative of sine is still cosine, I'm out of room, but that's okay because the derivative of the eight is zero, so I can close this off. I'm sorry if the tip of this uh, old-fashioned pencil sharpener is blocking part of your view. All right, so I claim that when we clean this mess up, it's gonna collapse down to sine to the fifth power. And you may not believe it until it happens, and frankly, I'll believe it when it happens. I'm confident it will. So let's see what we need to do. Well, first we need to bust open all the parentheses. So if we bust open all the parentheses, uh, we're going to have to distribute, and this is where you have to be very, very, very laser focused. We need to distribute this factor to both halves of this addition problem. Excuse me, all three parts of this addition problem. So this will get distributed three times over. Let's see what that gives us. We'll get 3 fifteenths, which reduces to 1 fifth. Sine x times sine to the fourth x, so there's a sine to the fifth x, that's encouraging, we need some of those. Plus, 1 15th times 4 is 4 fifteenths. Uh, sine x times sine squared is sine cubed, we don't need any of those, I hope they disappear in a moment. And then plus, 8 times this is 8 fifteenths sine of x. So here's what I'm hoping will happen eventually. We'll pick up another four-fifths of these to make one of them, and stuff will show up to cancel these. All right, uh, let's do the distribution over here. So we're distributing negative 1 15th cosine x to both halves of this addition problem. You might be wondering, but look at all those cosines mucking things up, but I don't know what's gonna happen to me. All right, so negative 1 15th cosine x times 12 sine cubed cosine x. First off, it's gonna be negative. Secondly, 12 over 15 reduces to 4 fifths, and then we get sine cubed of x times uh, cosine of x times cosine of x is cosine squared of x. Okay, that's not looking very helpful. And when we distribute across here, negative times positive is negative. 8 times 15 is 8 fifteenths. Well, that's encouraging. I'm hoping some canceling happens there. Uh, but we have sine of x times cosine times cosine, so we have sine of x times cosine squared of x. And at this point, it looks like we just got a big mess because there are no like terms. These guys don't have the same power of sines, and these guys have cosines, so there's no like terms over there. Uh, and nothing's canceling. However, there's a good lesson to learn here. If you have a goal in mind, my goal is sine to the fifth of x. Identify what is in the way and what you're going to fix about it. Now, there's a lot of things wrong with this in terms of being this. But one of the glaring things is that has cosines and this doesn't. So as a problem-solving strategy, you identify what is preventing you from where you currently are to where you want to be. I'm currently here. I want to be there. The cosines are preventing me from being there. And then you ask yourself, what can I do to overcome that? I don't want cosines, I want signs. And I know